Hey folks, Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. Reading today from Bringing Us to Glory. David Gooding uh, is the uh, Bible scholar and and, uh, former pastor, uh, just an amazing uh, man who was a professor of Old Testament Greek at Queens University, Belfast here. It says, good friend of John Lennox, uh, who's a friend of us uh, here around uh, in the Village Chapel. And uh, it says on the back here in describing this daily reader, it says, Our lives are a mix of difficulties, laughter, and delight, of satisfying moments, seemingly hopeless situations, and unanswerable questions. Nature's beauty inspires our wonder today, but its power may break our bodies tomorrow. What will steady our faith in God and help it to grow when life is like that? And of course... Uh, David Gooding, so strong in his uh, belief in the scriptures and his uh, ability to teach from the scriptures. And so today I want to read just a little bit from John chapter 12, uh, verses 27. And um, he talks a little bit uh, here about the prayers of Christ and the vindication of God's character. And you're uh, I won't be able to read the whole text just because I don't have time, but uh, the two texts you want to read, John 12, 27 to 33, and 1 Timothy 6, 13 to 16, okay? So if you want to mark those down and and drag out your Bible and read those, I think that'd be really great, uh, along with this commentary that I'm going to read and just give you an idea of uh, the way that uh, Pastor Gooding uh, Professor Gooding uh, would teach from the scriptures. He also quotes Hebrews 5, 7. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. And so this is, I'm already drawn in. I, I'm fascinated by the, the prayers of Jesus. Uh, we, had a, we had a class in our church on the uh, prayers of the apostle Paul led by a couple TV series. I just thought that was an awesome idea. And I I just commend uh, the study of prayer throughout the Bible. Just that's a great thing to look at. But here's what uh, David Gooding has to say here on the prayers of Christ and the vindication of God's character. Of all the prayers and and intercessions that God has ever heard, those surely will prove the most effective that came from the lips and heart of the Son of God incarnate. For the amazing story is this, God has not only looked down from his sanctuary on high, but in the person of his son, he came down. And so, yeah, that's why his, you know, the prayers of Jesus, so, so amazing to read. And uh, of course, when he, when his disciples came and asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. And, and, and the Lord Jesus, I'm sure spoke on prayer many times. But in the re- recording that we have in uh, in Matthew's gospel, he gives them what we call the Lord's Prayer, and we're very familiar, all of us, with that as well. So he teaches them to pray that way, and he is teaching them uh, at the very beginning of that to say, Our Father, and that's just, just a huge shift in their thinking back then. And to the idea that God was transcendent and far and high above and creator God, that's one thing. Uh, but that he would be intimate and close, nearby enough, interested in us enough to want to be called Father. Well, you should count the number of times Jesus refers to Father in Matthew chapter 5 and 6 and 7 there. It's just amazing. Anyway, back to this before I get too far off track. Um, uh, God had not only looked down from his throne and his sanctuary on high, but he came down in the person of Christ. The same Lord who will one day appear in his glory and rebuild Zion once was manifested in the flesh, walked the streets of Jerusalem. He not only viewed earth's pains, injustices, and cruelties from on high, but he personally came and experienced them. And I don't know what you're going through now. I know our world is going through a great deal of turmoil and pain. And it's amazing to me to think that the God who is there isn't just in a very indifferent way from somewhere in the, you know, back 40 acres of the universe somewhere, observing it all and going, 
Oh, those poor little humans. They've made such a mess of things again. No, he actually came, became one of us into a dark world. He was rejected by his own. And then he died in my place on the cross for my sin. Not for his sin, but for my sin and for your sin. That's just mind-blowing. There's no other religion that is like this. Uh, there's no other religion that offers salvation by grace through faith. Uh, and this is just amazing that, that Christ would come. Well, let's see what else he has to say here. He not only viewed earth's pains and justices and cruelties, but he actually came and experienced them. He not only heard the prayers of the distressed, but he joined in them. Hmm. He not only listened to the groanings of prisoners condemned to death, but became a prisoner himself, and though sinless, was numbered with the transgressors, was cut off out of the land of the living as a young man, bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Son of God, though the incarnate Messiah was during the days of his life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Again, that Hebrews 5, verse 7. One day, not only in response to the prayers of the faithful of all ages, but supremely in answer to the prayers and intercessions of the Messiah, God will bring about the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can read all about that in uh, 1 Timothy 6. You can read about it in the book of Revelation as well. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. It's just amazing that God, the sovereign God, who created everything out of nothing, is actually in charge of the course and flow of this history, even though it undulates and goes through those kind of dips and valleys that I would prefer it not to go through. But the Lord is always active and his purposes will be accomplished. Really powerful to know that and to be reminded of that. What a vindication of the character of God that will be. What a declaration of his name, a demonstration of the glory of his faithfulness and compassion. What a vindication before all the agnostics and atheists of the world of the revelation of God and his word witnessed to by uh, uh, witnessed to by historic Israel and Jerusalem. Prayer, too, will be vindicated against all those unbelievers and critics who said so often that prayer was useless because either God did not hear or if he heard, he did not care. See, when the Lord wraps everything up and his purposes are accomplished, the promise is of the, of the, of the New Testament is that he's going to set all things right. Everything broken in this world, everything sad in this world will become untrue. And he will set the world to rights. That's what we have to look forward to, and that's what's wonderful. And that will vindicate every prayer you've ever prayed or I've ever prayed, because the God we have prayed to will have accomplished his purposes. The appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will demonstrate overwhelmingly that God both heard and cared. God's name and God's character will be declared in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem and literally throughout the world. And the peoples and the kingdoms of the world will assemble to worship the Lord. That's how he closes out. That's just awesome. That's taken from David Gooding's book, An Unshakable Kingdom, which is a commentary in the book of Hebrews. And I encourage you, if you want to study Hebrews sometime, do it with David Gooding. Man, he's a, a great Bible expositor and a man that is just passionate about the Lord. Let me pray for us today. Lord, you are good and you are sovereign. And Lord, though the storms may rage and the, the giants may rail against us from time to time and the... Uh, the, the flow of our culture may be so negative and so dark, uh, and the world around us uh, may cause us to, to question. Lord, help us be reminded by your word and by servants of your word, like David Gooding and others, uh, Lord, that you are faithful and true. 
You have not misplaced one atom or molecule of your creation. And you, Lord, will accomplish your purposes and fulfill your promises. And we're counting on you, Lord. We believe in you and we hope in you. Bring to your people courage and faith to trust in you. And Lord, comfort your people who are in pain or suffering right now. And Lord, bring light into our darkness, we pray. Bring healing to our sicknesses, uh, to Lord, comfort to our sorrows, Lord. Be our God, our refuge, our strength, our fortress, we pray. In Jesus' name, for his sake, amen and amen. God bless you. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.